What up, though? What up, though? Hold on. I feel like this camera ain't really. It looks look a little blurry. What up, though? Move this box over a little bit. All right, this feels a lot better right there. Now, I be very uh, conscious when I'm talking about certain stories, especially if it's a story that could, um, I guess, expose certain things, anything got to do with uh, the staff of a prison that I spent time at, especially if it got something to do with the staff that did something um, very unrighteous or whatever the case is. And, you know, I think sometimes like, damn, even though I switch up names and descriptions and locations and, you know, amongst other things, it just makes me think sometimes like, damn, can y'all hear me? Because somebody told me earlier they couldn't hear me because of the way I got the phone propped up. Let me know if y'all can hear me. But it just makes me wonder if, you know, if if certain things should even get spoke on. And, bruh, as long as it's something where there is some unrighteousness and maybe a story that I'm telling can can bring light to help somebody better themselves or change their life, bruh, I don't give a damn, bruh. You feel me? And it's just like... It is what it is, bro. So today I'm going to talk about, um, this is a very crazy thing. And it's some very, 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 very crazy events that occurred, right? This is around, I just cleaned the bathroom with a bunch of bleach. I be liking the smell of bleach, bro. So my nose kind of running that bleach done got to me. But, bro. This is around the time the virus was going on. Joe Dirt, what up, though? This is around the time the virus was going on, bro. And they had, like, it was switching up so much. One, one week we might be out. One week we might be locked down. One week everybody might be going to, <clears throat> going to detail. One week they might not let nobody go to detail or nothing like that, bro. You know what I'm saying? And it's because they were saying... You know, because of the virus is spreading and they, you know, they're trying to stop people from getting it. They're trying to minimize the people that end up with the virus. You know what I'm saying? Um, They came in the dorm one day, bro. Now, we were on what you call a modified lockdown. Now, the modified lockdown means anybody in here with details, you're not going to work. Child call is coming to you. You're not going to child. Um, just any type of everyday movement, you're not doing it. If you got uh, GED classes, you're not going to it. You're not about to do nothing that you would usually do on a modified lockdown. The only freedom we do have is we can freely roam the dorm. We're not outside of the dorm nobody can leave out the dorm that's modified lockdown so they're not even letting the kitchen workers go to work the kitchen workers is who make the prison flow for real because they be in there working they be in there handling that business bruh so the food every time we was on this lockdown the food was super super late because it's only staff members working in there bro like you literally had the people that work in the stove in the kitchen you had the gym orderlies in the kitchen. You had regular officers and lieutenants working in the kitchen area. So the food was extra late. So one day, it's like three, four officers. They pulling the the um the, the cart down here with the trays. They get to the dorm, they put it in the salad port. The lieutenant with them, they come inside the dorm and tell us to lock down. Tell us to lock down. Hold on, let me turn this AC on real quick. I just got hot. They come in the dorm with the trays, pull all the trays in the salad port, leave it right there, 
And then the lieutenant go to screaming to us, telling us to lock down. So, you know, the very first thing, everybody turned up, bro. We was just locked down a few days ago for like a week, bro. You know what I'm saying? They just now let us back off of lockdown days ago. Now he coming back in here telling us to lock down again, bro. So everybody running up here like, LT, what the hell going on, man? What the hell we got the lockdown for, man? So how they were doing it at first, whoever has... The virus, they had some scanner thing. They was putting it on our forehead. And based off of our temperature, I guess determines if you had it or not. So they did that days ago. They come today, the lieutenant saying, now, nah, what I was saying was, whoever had it at first, like when they first came by, checking your temperature. If it's like a few people got it, they make you leave out the dorm and they send you to the hole. But now it's so many people in the hole with the virus, they can't even keep up with it, bro. They can't send no more people to the hole. So now it's like if enough people in this dormitory has it, we're just going to lock down the whole dorm. So the lieutenant told us it's too many people in our dorm that has the virus and he has to lock everybody down. This dude named B. Dot, young dude. I don't think B Dot was even 19 years old, bro. I think bruh had to be about 18, getting ready to turn 19. He's in the second room upstairs. B Dot come running down the stairs, running towards the lieutenant, talking about, hey, LT, man, before we lock down, man, you need to get my roommate out of the room, man. That's an old man. That was an old school dude in the room with him. He like, man, that's an old man, man. I think his ass in there sick, bro. He in there breathing all crazy. He talking about he can't smell nothing. He can't taste nothing. Man, hell no. Y'all need to get him out of my room, bro. I'm not trying to go in there with that man. I ain't got that stuff. So the, the lieutenant asked him, what's his last name? What's his room number? So he got a little pad right there. So he tell him. So he go through it, I guess, to make sure. Last time we got checked, little bro didn't have a high temperature. I guess he didn't. So the lieutenant was like, all right, listen, give me five minutes. We got to go over here to this dorm right here, lock them down. Then I'm going to come back over here and feed these trays. And then I'm going to get medical over here. So B-Dot like, bro, listen, bro. I'm telling you, LT, bro, the man, <laughs> like he can't breathe or something. And he just told me he can't smell or taste nothing. I'm telling you, bro, get that man out of my room, man. So the lieutenant like, listen to me, bro. This is my word. I'm giving y'all boys my word. Give me five minutes. Give me five minutes, and I'm going to make sure we get back over here. I just need to lock this other dorm down. This dorm next to y'all, this is my last dorm I got. I'm going to lock this other dorm down, and then I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to feed y'all y'all trays, and I'm going to get medical down here. So the dude beat up. I was like, LT, that's your word, LT. LT was like, bro, that's my word. I'm telling you. He go on about his business. So, you know, LT screaming, lock down, lock down, man. Come on, lock down so y'all can eat, so y'all can eat. We ain't ate all day. We hungry as hell. As I walk back to my room, I look at my watch. 556. And I said, I don't, I don't like to have a negative thought to the point I think everything is BS. Or I feel like it ain't, it ain't no type of help. But, bro, they get off at 6 o'clock. From my experience of being in prison for years, if they ever come in there close to 6 p.m. trying to rush you to do anything, they lie. They just trying to get you to comply with whatever it is they saying so they can hurry up and go home. That's it. That's all. So I have the thought in the back of my mind, man, LT had line, bro. But I don't, I don't even want to, I don't want to speak that. Go in my room, lockdown. Man, probably a good 10 minutes go by. You hear B dot up there beating on the door. Do, 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 do. He like, hey man, man, old school done passed out in this motherfucker, man. He like, man, y'all help me, bro. Beat on the door, get somebody down here, bro. Now, the angle I'm at, I'm downstairs from my room. I'm probably one, two, three, four, five. I'm probably the fifth room right here. From what I can see out this door, I can see the walk. I can see when they get kind of down the walk coming from administration. I can't see administration from here, but I can see coming down the walk from administration. And I can see the officer's booth. But there's not an officer in sight. Everybody go to beating on the door. Do, 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 do. Beating on the door, kicking on the door, screaming. But this goes on for about 15 minutes. Even I turned around and kicked the door a couple of times. This goes on for about 15 minutes. 
No nothing. You don't hear, you don't see an officer nowhere in sight. B dot go to screaming, <coughs> help, help, help. So you know everybody else like B dot, what the fuck going on, B dot? What the hell going on up there, B dot? He like, man, old school done passed out, man. He was just laying on the bottom bunk. His head done passed out. He laid out on the floor on his stomach, man, just passed out. So now, you know, people go to boo, 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 beating the door, kicking the door down some old. Nothing happens, bro. Bro, this is no exaggeration. You know, it eventually died down. But, bro, literally about an hour went by. Literally. It was around 7-ish. I remember looking at my watch before we seen an officer in sight. It was a girl, a young girl. I think she probably about 20, 21. Heavy set young lady. Very, very, very nasty attitude. Um, looked like Wesley Snipes' uh, grandma. And she was only 21. She comes to the booth. When she gets inside the booth, everybody go to beating on the door. Do, 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 do. Bro, you got about 20, 30 people beating on the door, kicking on the door, trying to get her attention. She looks at us from the booth and just go back to doing whatever she's doing. I guess doing paperwork, whatever it is she's doing. She leave out the booth. She go in the other dorm. She go do her little rounds. I can see her when she get on a certain side of the comp, uh, of the dorm. I can see her like looking in those. She got a little pen with her. She's signing charts and stuff. She get in here to our dorm. Bro, the second she walk in the dorm, B-Dot go to screaming, help, help, help. So you still got other people kicking and screaming. Yeah. So she like, man, I can't hear all y'all, man. Too many of y'all talking at one time. So, you know, everybody kind of shut up or whatever the case. B-Dot go to screaming, help, help. So she like, what room is that? So he say his room up. So she like, all right, I'm about to come up there. Bro, she starts on the bottom range. <laughs> And starts going to doors. How many? Now, whenever they walk up to your door and say how many, they trying to do their count. But whenever you lock down behind the door, they got to ensure that it's, <clears throat> you know, two, one or two people in this room. It can't be more. So they got to look through the door. How many she'll do that? Let me see. Whatever. Bro, she's going door to door on the bottom when directly upstairs, this man screaming, help. These folks saying it's an emergency. So it's all kind of people cussing her out, bro. All kind of people. She's getting a kick out of this shit, folks. She's smiling, arguing back with people, cussing people out, all kind of stuff. B dot ain't stopped screaming help or kicking the door yet. Not once. She make her way down here to my room. I purposely turn off the light and get right up on the door. My roommate back there, you ain't even finna see him. Get your ass up there to them, you feel me? So she get to the door. So I'm at the door like this. So she like, back up, man, so I can see how many. I say, hey, man, listen, man. That man up there in that room done passed out or something. He been up there laid out for about an hour, bro. You need to get your black, ugly Wesley Snipes. Look, I just spazzed out, bro, because it pissed me off so bad. And she started laughing, calling me all kind of bitches, all kind of stuff. So then she like, hey, man, I'm not leaving away from this door until you move out the way so I can see how many. So, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking like, she, she really trying to make the dorm turn on me. By making it seem as if I'm the reason why she ain't up there checking on old school. Because I won't move away from the door. And everybody know I'm just trying to get her up there faster. So that's what makes me move out the way. I move out the way. I move to the side. She looked through the door. She see my roommate. I had hit the light so she could see my roommate. She walked off. She finally went upstairs. She got all the way down there on that end. His room was the second from the last. When she finally got to his room, still taking her precious little time. When she finally got to that room, she looked through the door. She said, how many? And b Dot said whatever he said. She said, move out the way. You could hear him telling her like, man, this man passed out, man. He woo 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 This man passed out. So she like, move out the way. Let me see. Move out the way. Let me see. He moves out the way, I guess. She signs something on the chart. Go to the very next door. So everybody starts screaming again like, hey, man. She like, man, I'm about to call medical. God damn. You know, stuff like that. So she go to that last door. She looked through there, how many, whatever. She signed the chart. She walks out of there, bro, walks downstairs, go straight out the door, and go inside the booth, sit down, start eating a bag of chips. Bro, everybody going crazy. Number one, you got people who care about old school that want to make sure he's straight. Then you got, bro, our trade's been sitting out here. Shit, this is going on an hour and what, 10 minutes now? We know the food cold now. <coughs> so you got some people beating the door. 
still screaming, saying stuff about unk. Some people beating the door, saying stuff about the food. It died down for a minute. I guess she, you know, need help to feed us. She's not finna feed us by herself instead of just explaining that. She just lied about medical, just left out, went in there. So you got a few people call my name, like, say, see, Bill? I'm like, yo, because the room where I'm positioned at, they can't see her from their room. They're like, brother, officer in the booth. I'm like, hell yeah, I'm looking right at her. Everybody go to beating on the door again. Boo, 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 boo. She eventually come back in there. She stick her head in the door. She say, man, y'all, hold on, man. Just chill, man. We finna get y'all trays in a minute. I got to wait on the other officer. So you got all kind of people screaming, man, fuck them trays, man. Get in here and check on that old man, bro. She close the door, go back in the booth, sit back down. I'm looking at her with my own two eyes the whole time. Looking right at her, bro. Finally, some more officers come down there. We thinking they finna come in on this side, but they go over there to the one side. Next thing you know, B Dot go to screaming, man, hell no, man, hell no. So everybody like, what's up, B Dot? What's going on out there? What's going on out there? They say, he say, man, I don't know what the fuck you got going on, unk, but I ain't with none of them chain gang gangs. I ain't with none of that shit, unk. So it slightly made me feel better because I knew Unk was okay at this point. Because B Dot telling Unk, I don't know what you got going on. I'm not with none of them chain gang games you got going on up here. I ain't on none of that. So it made me feel okay. Because at first, I ain't going to lie, I thought Unk was dead. The way he say he passed out, bro, that's what I was thinking. I'm like, damn, old school must be up there dead or something. He been laid out on the floor. So when, like I say, when I heard him say that, it made me feel better. Like, okay, at least I know Unk okay. So people go to screaming him, what you mean, b up? What he got going on? What he talking about? What he talking about? That's what beat up homeboys and stuff was saying. He like, man, that man up here pissing and shitting on himself, bro. He got me fucked up. So now that worry comes back over me again. Because I'm like, damn, he pissing and dookieing on himself. So one of the old, one of the other old school dudes was like, what he, what he on the toilet? He, what he doing? When B-Dot said, Hell no, man, he laying in the same position. His ass ain't even moved yet. And he just laying here shitting and pissing on himself. When he said that, I said, Unk dead. That what I said in my head, bro. I didn't say it to nobody. I looked back at my roommate. My roommate was looking at me, then went back to looking down at his phone. I said in my mind, I said, Unk dead, bro. There's no way he passed out on his stomach, laid there, did not move for a long time, and now he's releasing urine and bowel movement. I said, bro, Unk up there, dead. I know he is, bro. I felt it, bro. Finally, the officers came in there. They pulling the trays in there, bro. Everybody spazzing, screaming, beating on the door, cussing the officers out. The officers going back and forth. They, they so focused on these trays, bro. Everybody screaming, bro, where is medical? Where is medical? This old man passed out. This old man used it on himself. Where is medical, bro? Where is the medical? Why you ain't got medical down here? It's a lieutenant, the night shift lieutenant. It's three female officers. Bro, why everybody making this ruckus, screaming, cussing, beating, kicking on the door? These folks is taking the trays, walking some of them upstairs, setting them down on the cart upstairs, grabbing some more tray. He's upstairs. B dot is acting a fool, beating on the door. Bro, not one officer walked over there to that door. Taking the trays up there, they finally get the trays upstairs. They said, you know, the lieutenant told them we gonna crank up up here. Y'all crank up down there or whatever. Let's just knock this out. Let the inmates come out one at a time to go get some ice or whatever the case is like that. It's worse now, Bill. We ain't got but three officers running the whole prison. I know, bro. So he say, uh, y'all crank up downstairs. We cranking up upstairs. Let the inmates out one at a time to go get ice. We had a big ass ice thing over there by the water fountain. That's like in the front of the dorm as soon as you walk in. He go to the first door. He popped the first door. They come in there. They, uh, you know, he give them their trays. They run downstairs. They get their ice real quick. They come back upstairs. He popped B dot though. B dot come out spaz. Man, y'all got me fucked up, man. The old man here done passed out. I told first shift the man needed some help, bro. I think that man might be dead, bro. So you got the lieutenant keep telling him, chill. Hey, like, man, the fuck 
you mean? Chill out, LT. So he like, bro, go get your ice, bro. I'm gonna see about the old man. Go get your ice. So B dot go to going downstairs. The girl that was working is downstairs. She's still on the first room. B dot go to walking downstairs. That man ain't even got a cup in his hand, bro. He walking downstairs. He mean mugger. He stared like that when he turned the thing. She looking at him, smiling, talking about, and, and what, inmate? I don't give a fuck about no inmate staring at me. What you gonna do to me, inmate? Pulled the pepper spray off her belt. Talking about, what you gonna do to me, inmate? What you gonna do to me, inmate? b dot ain't saying nothing. He just kept walking over there, but he was just standing at her the whole time. Lieutenant and the other officer, it's two officers downstairs. It's the lieutenant and the one other woman officer with him upstairs. They go inside the room. I'm standing in my flat watching this whole thing play out. So the lieutenant in there, you can tell he done kneel down because I see like his head going lower. So he on the floor doing something, I guess, checking on uncle, you know, whatever it is he doing with old school. Lieutenant come back out, come back out the room. He tell b -Dot, he like, hey, man, come on. So b -Dot turned around, standing at the water fountain. He like, what's up? He like, come on, man, y'all got to lock back down. We got to leave. We got to get medical down here. So he like, that's what the fuck I've been trying to tell this ugly, stupid bitch. For the longest, you know what I'm saying? So the girl turned around. She got a spasm again. She like, bitch, I don't give a fuck about nothing you talking about. So b -Dot was like, what's up, Aunt Straight? He's straight. So Lieutenant was like, come on, man. Come back up here in the room and lock down, man. And this was so fucked up. This old man is in here passed out, bro. I don't know at this point 100% facts had he passed away. But just, you know, I worked in the medical field uh, prior to my incarceration. So I had an idea of what it looked or sounded like. How is it you trying to put B dot back in the room with this man corpse and lock the door? That don't even sound right, LT. He going back and forth, so B-Dot come back walking this way. The girl still spazzing. As B-Dot get closer to the steps, she pull off the spray. LT look over the rail. He like, hey, such and such, talk to the officer. He like, man, chill out. Stop arguing with that inmate. Put that damn pepper spray back on your waist. That inmate ain't finna do nothing to you. Man, that girl put that pepper spray back on her waist and turned like she was about to unlock the second door. B-Dot grabbed her from the waist. Mm. Picked her up, slammed her, jumped on top of her, punched her in the face all kind of times. So the other officer reaching for her pepper spray. She didn't have one trying to get it off of her. Beat out, turned to her, uppercut at her. But the little dude hit the girl in the face one time, knocked her out. Lieutenant and the other girl come running downstairs. Lieutenant done pulled the pepper spray off this belt. Lieutenant got the big pepper spray. His pepper spray way bigger than they little pepper spray. They just got the little one. Look like something like this. He got the big one with the big can that clip on. He pulled that off. He grabbed the little baton thing off. He was swinging it down like this as he was running down the steps to make it come all the way out. When he when he got up, you know, everybody screaming, beat up, beat up, trying to keep him on point and stuff. So, bruh jumped up off of her, so she laid down on the ground. She shell shot. She's still doing like this. Bruh turned to the lieutenant. He said, you're going to have to do it. You're going to have to do Y'all got us f***ed up. Y'all got us f***ed up. Lieutenant held the spray up, bruh, went to hitting it. When he held the spray up and went to hitting it, the little dude beat up, closed his eyes. And linked in and just went swing, hitting his ass with the windmill. Hit LT in the face about three, four times. The girl that was next to him, she was trying to move. He hit her in the face. She fell down on the steps, jumped right back up. But you know, Lieutenant big as hell, bigger than B-Dot. Lieutenant was able to snatch him up, slam him out, handcuff him, picked him up, told the girl to walk him out there. Bro, the girl walking him out there, he bucking, keep trying to turn to her, all kind of stuff. They get to the door, he like, hold on. Lieutenant over here checking on the girl that's laid out on the floor. Both of the girls is laid out on the floor. She get over here to the door. She like, man, M.A., just chill out. Just chill out, man. That boy beat up. She let his arm go. He turned around, look her straight in the face. <clears throat> Spit in her face. Like, bro, that little dude was mad, bro. She go to scream and she started swinging on him. Bro, it was chaos in there that day, bro. She started swinging on the man while he handcuffed. The lieutenant run over here, snatch her up off of him, unlock the door, pushed him out, locked the door. So now B Dot is in handcuffs in the salad port. So the lieutenant done finally got these officers up, done walked them out there. He done made the other girl who was swinging on B Dot calm down. They get outside, they go to walking up the walk. I guess the lieutenant just want to make sure he beat out, get to the hole. You know, because the girl might be in their feelings and might try to beat his ass or whatever the case. Lieutenant and 
Total different officers come back in the dorm. They shoot straight upstairs. Medical came right behind them shortly after that. J-Bo like, see, man, you seen that? J-Bo is a dude in the room directly next to me. I'm like, hell yeah, boy, I just seen the whole thing. I've been sitting right here in my in my flap watching it. He said, bro, you want to know what's crazy, though? I said, what that? He said, boy, I got they ass on camera. I said, no. He said, boy, I got they ass on camera. I got from the moment that girl came in here doing them rounds, bro, you can hear it, bro. When everybody's screaming something wrong with unk, something wrong with unk, bro, you can hear it. I got her ass on camera from that moment. This whole fight, everything, boy, I got it on camera. Boy, I'm finna try to goddamn work one on the warden. So I'm like, no. So while I'm talking to him, I'm still looking out the door. You got the medical up there, whatever it is they doing, then a whole nother set of medical that don't even work at the prison coming here. That's when it was verified 100% Unc was up there dead. They went in there and she had put them on the stretch. They brought them out. They had the thing covered all the way up. You couldn't even see nothing. You got the guys carrying them downstairs, bro. Took them out there. J-Bo say, I'm about to try to Put the press on the warden. I'm like, what you mean? The man said, I'm going to email this to the warden. Tell him this is the only copy. And I want $10,000 and some release papers. I tell J-Bo, bro, I just don't think that's the smartest idea in the world. Simply because how the hell you think you're going to do such a thing and get away with such a thing like that? Like, you really think the warden... Because all they got to do is lie anyway. Do you honestly believe in the back of your mind these folks going to give you $10,000 and release you from prison? So I was trying to explain to him that, bro, the warden is not even in control of if you go how much time you do or how soon you get out. I mean, he probably can have some say-so to the parole board like, hey, this is a good inmate. I really believe he changed his life. But, nigga, he can't control if you just go home or not. I think that's stupid. I think what you should do... Post that shit on a public platform so any and everybody can see it. Any and everybody can search it. He don't listen to me. He don't listen to me at all. Um, they eventually came back and gave us the trays, bro. I don't even think I ate that night, bro. The, the food was so cold and nasty, bro. I didn't even want to eat. Bro, I say so old school, it was the virus that took them out the game. Um... They put B dot on the tier on the tier program. I say, bruh, what that was? That was dinner time. That was probably around about 5 p.m. But I say about 2 o'clock in the morning. The folks came in the dorm so deep. It was the cert team amongst other officers, deep as hell, came in the dorm. They started at that very first room for like the next Seven rooms. They tore our mouth out, bro. Tore our mouth out. This is when I knew officially something was finna happen bad. They found my roommate phone. They found this phone. They turned it on standing right in front of us. One of the night shift lieutenants standing right in front of us. Turned the phone on. And like I say, bro, I don't, I don't care, bro. You feel me? I ain't, I ain't saying you. I ain't calling out certain things, but it is what it is, bro. They standing right in front of us with the phone. I never forget this. I remember like it was yesterday. The lieutenant looked at both of us and said, "Who phone is this?" I'm like, "Shit, bro. I don't know nothing about no phone." My roommate say the same thing. He said, "Hey, listen, bro. This is just what I'm gonna tell y'all, and it's just gonna be, this is just gonna be the way it's gonna go." Unlock this phone. I'm just looking for something. If what I'm looking for is not in this phone, my right hand of Jesus Christ, you can have the phone back. So we like, huh? It don't even sound right. Nigga, since when you you knock off a phone and give it back because you looking for something? What the hell could you possibly be looking for? So I'm thinking he capping. You feel me? He kept it. So he like, bro, listen. Give me the code to the phone. If you know for a fact you ain't been doing nothing crazy and you ain't got nothing crazy in here that would cause us to come down here and do this, 
you should have no worries. Unlock this phone, and I'll give it back to you if ain't nothing in here. My stupid roommate. One, two, six, four, nine, one. He give him the code. I don't know if that was the code, but he give him the code. He typed the code in. The very first thing the lieutenant do is click on the gallery. He scrolling. He looking. He searching. Then he looked through the text message. So he had an app on his phone called Keep Safe. The app is a private hiding app where you can store photos and videos and all kind of stuff. The dude went to Keep Safe. They got a lock on it. He said, unlock this app. So bro was like, man, yeah, T, I ain't even going to lie, bro. That's why I got all my feel my videos and my pictures of me that I send my girl when I be jacking. You feel me? There ain't nothing but pictures of my private parts in there. He said, man, I don't give a fuck about none of that. That's not what I'm looking for. Unlock this app, bro. Dude told him the code. LT unlocked it. He looked through the phone. I promise you, that lieutenant cut that phone off, threw the phone on the bed, walked out the room. When that happened, bro, I said, J-Bo dumbass did that shit for real. That man probably sent that video. You can easily find the, the, the warden's phone number and email address. It's public information. It's on the website. I said, this stupid nigga probably sent that video for real, that footage that he had to the warden. And he's a stupid man for that. Bro, they did their little shakedown. They hit like seven rooms. When they officially got done and they was walking out, they had J-Bo and his roommate in handcuffs walking them out the room. J-Bo roommate got put on the tier program and got sent to a total different prison. J-Bo got put on the tier program, was in the room by himself for probably 13, 14 days. Emergency lockdown. What the hell we locking down for? Oh, some inmate on the tier killed himself. Who? We finally get the word. J-Bo hung himself. This nigga sent the warden a video of his officers leaving the inmate hanging, doing some cricket stuff while the man was dead and, and doing all this stupidity. The stupid nigga sent it to the, the, um, hold on. I just had to kick that nigga off the membership. But this, this is, I'm, I don't even find this funny. You in the comment joking and shit talking about cap. Get your ass out of here, nigga. So he, I guess, sent the video to the warden for real. And and and, and he was posted on the on the on the Georgia Department of Corrections website under what's going on in the prison as suicide. Inmate went crazy on the tip program and hung himself. For what? J-Bo was getting money. That nigga had a phone. What the fuck he go hang himself for? That nigga ain't hang himself, bro. I don't believe that, bro. It ain't a bone in my body that believe that. Why y'all catch my roommate with a phone and give it back to him? What is it that you was searching for in that phone? Bro, in my entire nine years of my... Be it. Now, I have seen officers, you know, pop a nigga with a phone and then you can finesse them with money. Hey, LT, why I give you a thousand dollars? Give me my phone back. They give you their cash up. Well, if I ain't got that thousand by tomorrow, I'm going to come get that phone. But you talking about let me go through the phone and I'm looking for something and I'm going to give it back and gave it back for real? Bro, they did that shit, bro. If you go to the Georgia Department of Corrections website, it's so many deaths that say suicide. Man, them niggas ain't killing themselves, bro. You do got something that's crazy. You feel me? They be on drugs. They be hearing shit. They be just doing stuff. But I just don't believe all these people that I done seen that have kicked it with, been in the dorm with, good niggas getting money. Their kids keep them motivated. They ain't even got that long before they go home. They fuck around, get caught up in a certain situation, dealing with the administration, and now they magically kill themselves. I'm just not going for that, bro. I'm just not going for it. That's why I stress do the right thing, bro. Cause, cause, cause bro, I don't know what y'all think. I don't know what y'all, you know, take life for or whatever. Bro, you can go in that prison and never make it out. 
You can go in that prison, think you're supposed to be protected by the staff, and them will be the same motherfuckers that'll come in that room and kill you. They'll wrap a, 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 a sheet around your neck, nigga. They will hang you. They will do whatever it is they do to you, and they'll report it to the public and say, oh, the inmate went crazy in the cell by itself. Oh, you know, we're here to protect. Oh, we so sorry. Oh, the inmate hung himself. Bro, there's so many people done died in that bitch, and they family ain't got no explanation from the Department of Corrections, bro. I just wanted to tell y'all that, bro. That story just slightly pissed me off telling it. And uh, I don't even think I want to linger around too much right now. It's your boy, Bill. I'm gone.